हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू लिटरेचर वॉरियर्स मैनी स्टूडेंट्स हैव रिक्वेस्टेड टू डू एन एनालिसिस ऑन द पोयम द ईगल बाय अल्फ्रेड लॉर्ड्स टेनिसन सो टुडे आई वुड बी डूइंग अ ब्रीफ डिस्कशन फ्रॉम द पोयम द ईगल बाय अल्फ्रेड लॉर्ड्स टेनिसन सो इफ यू हैव नॉट येट सब्सक्राइब द चैनल subscribe the channel literature warriors and share it with your friends especially with the friends who are doing english literature well so before starting the poem i would like to tell something about the poet alfred lord tennyson he was born in 189 and died in 1892 he was a well educated man and he came from a high class background and he was appointed as the poet laureate or uh, official poet in england so he has written large number of poems and uh, they are popular even today and uh, in the earlier syllabus as well earlier all of the literature syllabus there was a poem from alfred lord tennyson that was uh, the charge of the light brigade and uh, it was uh, written during the crimean war time and it was a war poem and now uh, in this your in your anthology in your oliver literature anthology you have the poem the eagle uh, and uh, it is a lesson on poem and it's also a nature poem and i think uh, this is the shortest poem in the anthology because uh, there are only two stanzas with six lines um uh, so though this this seems to be a short poem now usually we think that short poems are easy to understand because there are only few lines but uh, there are in shorter poems there are deeper meanings so i I will try my best to analyze the poem in a very simple manner. So, and uh, this when he, uh, he wrote this poem uh, uh, when he was young, and he was visiting the Alfred Lord Tennyson was visiting uh, in the in Spain in Pyrenees Mountains, and uh, he has seen there he has seen the uh, eagles, and also he has enjoyed the. nature so the outcome was a nature poem called the eagle well so um, and well i will first read the poem first stanza he clasps the crag with crooked hands close to the sun in lonely lands ringed with the azure world he stands the wrinkled bene- sea beneath him crawls he watches from his mountain walls and like a thunderbolt he falls well you can see the poem is very short and uh, he is uh, see he seems to be the eagle so uh, you know who is an eagle when thinking about the title you know who is an eagle eagle is a a bird and uh, he seems to be a kind of a larger bird and uh, sometimes dangerous and he is also uh, depending on the prey that means uh, he eats small animals and uh, survives for his survival and uh, he is also with a, a bird with a sharp eyesight he's having a sharp eyesight sharp feathers and he's a kind of a uh, kind of a dangerous animal and he's having a sharp beak as well 
well so that is all about the eagle the bird and uh, so moving on to the stanzas you can see the simple meaning of the poem is the surface meaning is uh, the poet describes the behavior of the eagle and uh, how he attacks the prey at the end so how he first uh, he was he was in a he was on a rock on a on the top of the rock watching the sea where the where he can see his prey so finally at once when he sees his prey when he witness his prey he he speedily coming towards like a thunderbolt he is speedily coming towards its prey that is what the surface meaning of the poem so now we will analyze the poem the deeper meaning here well he clasps the crag with crooked hands so what is clasps clasp means holding tightly now here i am holding the pen tightly right you can see so like that like that the bird is uh, holding his hand to the rock very tightly so you can see what is a crag crag means a rocky surface and it's the zenith or the top of the mountain of a rock or a mountain there so crooked hands mean uh, the hands have been uh, curved you can see like this you can see the uh, fingers of the bird like this so he has been now think this is the surface of the rock the top of the rock so he is very holding tightly towards the rock then close to the sun in lonely lands so he has been in lonely lands close to the sun this seems to be a kind of a exaggeration as well because nobody can stay close to the sun but using this the poet tries to tell something he tries to uh, suggest that the bird belongs to a location where nobody can reach and lonely lands lonely lands lonely lands also suggest that this is an unreachable place for the normal people ringed with the azure world he stands so azure world means the the cloudless clear blue sky so it's a it's a world he's having a world well so you can see this is very really important in the first zanza the poet tries to convey the strength and the power strength and the power of the bird you can see the alliteration here clasps crags crude clasped crag crude so here the cur sound you can hear the cur sound so with the cur sound the poet gives a kind of a a hard feeling so that means the power of the power of the bird well so and uh, also you can see close to the sun lonely lands this is also important because uh, it tells you that he is from and unreachable place 
unreachable location and he is from a distant distanced place because lonely means nobody can reach there so he is from a distanced unreachable place and also this suggests the words majesty and uh, grandeur he seems to be a kind of a majestic figure a godly figure that's why a godly figure that's why he is from the azure world and he is also close to the sun and this place is uh, he is in an azure world he is in a cloudless clear place and he is uh, like the king in the like a king in his own kingdom well so you can see this is how the poet suggests the bird uh, with the hard sounds first he uh, elaborates or suggests the power of the bird the strength of the bird because it's a hard sound the curse sound and also it suggests he's, he's a kind of a ferocious being he's a kind of a ferocious being a dangerous being and uh, he is from a place where we cannot reach he is belong to a distant location and uh, these phrases close to the sun lonely lands as a world implies that uh, uh, he belongs to a kingdom of his own he is like a king there and the most important thing is uh, here you can see he and hands those words specially he instead of using the word it the poet has used he that means the poet has given him a human quality he has used personification there so this is a kind of a he is the poet has been attri attributed a human quality for the bird eagle there so with all this we can see he is a kind of a godly figure in the top of the world in the azure world means the sky is the top uh, the zenith of the world so he is in a top place where nobody can reach this also implies the you know now uh, the eagle is a representative of nature representative of nature so you can see nature eagle representing the nature eagle is in a top place uh, his godly figure and in a top pl place where nobody can reach there so indirectly the poet wants to uh, suggest that the nature is uh, beyond reach the human beings normal generally we cannot reach the uh, nature and we can't go beyond it so it's something like that indirectly it means something like that eagle as a representative of nature well in the second stanza uh, then the poet again uh, proves and uh, establishes the great height at which the eagle perches because uh, that's why he can see the uh, sea wrinkling beneath him he is in a top place and uh, he sees the sea is crawling now you can see uh, you know the sea is a kind of a large thing and many poems have been written about the sea in earlier syllabus there was a poem called the sea and it was compared to a hungry dog, hungry dog and uh, 
uh, said the sea is ferocious but here you can see the poet has um, demeaned or decreased the quality of the sea uh, in comparison with the power of the eagle so that's why he says the sea the wrinkle that means um, it has uh, its it ripples and small waves are there you know what what crawling crawling means now the sea is considered as a very uh, beautiful and a dangerous thing by some other poets but here this part the Tennyson have created sea as a um, as a mean thing because he is crawling he says the sea is crawling but the eagle is in a top place watching this crawling sea crawling you know normally uh, snakes crawl so the sea is also crawling according to him and he watches from his mountain walls now you can see his mountain walls so and the watchers he watches right so it suggests his sharp vision well and it also denotes that his mountain you can see his mountain it states his colossal state of the bird and of the bird means it's actually the nature the colossal state of the environment and it denotes that it belongs to him his his mountain walls so we cannot uh, have uh, mountains on our own but the bird can right so it's something like that and then like a thunderbolt he falls so the word thunderbolt indicates the authoritative power and its immense strength so here uh, with this one you can see uh, the eagle is some kind of a, a eagle's ferocity has been shown here because when he sees the prey when he witnesses the prey he like a thunderbolt you know thundering and lightning it suddenly happens and it it, it is destructive so this also suggests the unexpected attack unexpected sudden attack so it's very suggestive the immediate moment of the eagle also suggests his ferocity his dangerous nature and uh, uh, the the power of changing in a moment power of changing in a moment now when you that is what belongs to the nature that is a power which belongs to the nature suddenly it can change it can change its behavior now earlier he was a calm and quiet being on the top of the rock but suddenly he changes his behavior and come towards like a thunderbolt with a great speed with a great speed he comes towards the prey so that is what the poet wants to tell so here again you can see some kind of uh, uh, the great the grandeur has been given for the uh, eagle and again he is repeating he personifying the bird giving human qualities and uh, the poet also elaborates how uh, the majesty and the power of nature uh, we uh, can witness and uh, eagle representing the nature its power grand and magnificent majesty has been revealed through the eagles 
the the animal taking him the animal uh, as a very powerful creature so he has given uh, a godly figure and uh, he is also in uh, in an unreachable place and you can also see the freedom that the bird undergoes first he was uh, in a top of a mountain and lonely land a sore world he is being a king of the kingdom he has his power his freedom so and suddenly when he wants to change his behavior he, he comes towards the prey like a thunderbolt so the poet has attributed some of the uh, some of the human qualities especially the godly figure he is attributed uh, he has been attributed a godly figure to the eagle so we can see some of the as the themes um, you can see uh, majesty and power of nature and uh, you can also see the survival of the fittest you can see uh, the first theme has been uh, the first theme if i say uh, majesty and pro power of nature so this theme has been uh, supported by taking number of images from nature you can see uh, the azure the crag means a rocky surface and sun lonely lands uh, azure world that means the sky and the sea mountains and thunderbolt also some kind of nature natural thing so the poet has drawn uh, so many images from uh, nature to support this theme and also uh, the eagle's power and majesty is compared to the nature and uh, it is like a divine element it has taken as a divine element right so taking representing uh, nature eagle's power and majesty has been compared to support this theme and also uh, eagle's sudden change of behavior and we can't stop nature and we can't change nature the nature is the one who controls uh, us human beings so see we cannot uh, control his behavior like the nature like the nature we cannot control the nature's behavior as well so that's what uh, one of the themes here and uh, survival of the fittest the next theme uh, survival of the fittest that you can see uh, within the second stanza as well because uh, he was watching and he was uh, he was planning to grab the prey so he was the fittest and uh, the the powerless creature has to die and also the theme of freedom here as i have uh, described you as i have discussed with you the theme of freedom he can be in uh, in a place where he wants to be and finally he wo he can do what he wants so there are also some um, many techniques here personification and uh, alliteration is there and uh, exaggerative expression also there and here again alteration lonely lands la la and uh, again the like a thunderbolt it uh, it's a simile and some other techniques are also there i will discuss them separately so this is the end of the poem you can see this is a nature poem and uh, the eagle have been uh, the representative of nature and the poet has given you number of uh, uh, qualities of the eagle which is very he is a very powerful and a strong creature so very this poem is uh, short but it gives you many uh, deep meanings eagle is uh, the only creature used in the poem 
but it gives you some deeper meanings related to nature so this is a nature poem so um, i will be coming up with some other poems in the future and uh, as you have requested i will soon do a discussion a paper discussion with you so subscribe the channel literature warriors and uh, thank you all for watching